to get into a very exciting conversation with a gentleman that has truly personified excellence. It's so awesome to see what he's doing now because now, dear Anthony is literally on a different level. Stratosphere, honestly. And ladies and gentlemen, the man behind the amazing, exciting brand that is Caveman Watches. The one and only Anthony Jimmy is here. Hi, Anthony. Hello. How, how are you? Doing? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I've been okay. It, it's, it's been a while. Um, I don't think I've ever sat down with you and I'm excited about this one. Uh, <laughs> a little too excited. But firstly, how's the year been? How's 2024 been like for you? Very eventful. Yeah. Uh, in a good way. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, the the progress the success comes with its own challenges Absolutely. but yeah we look at the positive side of it you um open an, a new outlet mm -hmm. um and easter gone if I'm, if I'm right a, yep. a new experience corner yep tell me about that this year like yeah. the journey to creating this i think we've we've really done a lot in just five years you know? yeah it's wait cave watch is just five years yeah, just five are years. you serious <laughs> just five years wow personally i've been in the space for uh eight nine years now in mm, the watchmaking mm, space mm. but caveman as a brand it's turning five years uh we're gonna do a fifth anniversary before the year ends. oh but my yeah, goodness we've done a lot this is incredible we've done a lot in five years <laughs> okay now let's talk about how you even got into the watchmaking industry in the first place nine years ago yeah what what led you to get there how did you start off uh it was just some kind of accident i like to say that this is like a little bit so we can hear yeah you. some yeah. kind of accident i never grew up liking watches so uh, I was just feeling quite unfulfilled okay. where I used to work. Okay. Where sure. were you working? I was working uh, for a hotel at the airport. Okay. The guys who hold the placard at the airport. Stop it. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Stop uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Making around 500 cities a month. Um, and I was just not feeling fulfilled because mm. I believed that, you know, growing up, my friends all knew me to be a very most talented guy. Mm. And I'm just wondering, how do I have so much talent? And I'm just here holding placards. Mm. So it wasn't, I wasn't comfortable because mm. I had plans, I had dreams, I had dreams to become successful. And I'm there asking myself that, hey, if I'm here earning 500 cities a month, which usually doesn't even last for two weeks. Mm. I mean, I was there for three years. So logically, if I'm still there, nothing will change. And Absolutely. People say, Charlie, things go be, but things don't change unless you change them. Mm. So mm. I knew I had to take the step, you know. So I left and then just wondering what to do trying different things that failed very beautifully one day i walked what things that failed i used to actually go and buy um uh blazers suits from the uh forced guys mm, and you repackaged it guys. nicely yeah i repackaged it and make some few cities of it yeah. i was just surviving off that yeah some 20 cities profits here 30 cities here wow that's just what I was surviving on and it didn't last very long mm. one day I walked into a shop to buy a watch for the first time in my life I'm like hey let me buy a watch mm. you know and then um, I had my 50 cities the people were like nah it was 150 cities and I said ah, come on watch why is it so expensive 150 Ghana <laughs> so I saw somebody selling a watch online I called him he brought the watch I bought it for 50 cities just put on my watch took a picture of it and I uploaded a picture and somebody said, oh, nice watch. Are you selling it? And I said, yeah. Then the guy came and bought the watch. So I was like, wait. I could do this. Yeah. I could just turn this around. Exactly. So that's just how the idea came. And I started selling watches, um, imported watches on the streets of Accra, car parks, people's offices, door to door. So I was literally just selling watches to make a living. Mm. But I'm a very curious guy. You know, so one day I'm like, wait. How come all these watches I'm selling are all imported? Where are the African brands? And I started searching for African watch brands and I couldn't find any. And um, the same curiosity that had always led me into trouble growing up kicked in again. <laughs> I was like, wait, let me find out why there are no African brands. Mm. And one thing led to another and here we are. Wow. <laughs> now you decided, you know, I, I've been, in, I've, I've retailed in a space. Now it's time yeah. to actually go into the creation yep. of it. So the... Describe the first watch that was the first caveman watch. The first caveman watch was uh, the Blue Volta, mm. um, a blue-themed watch, very iconic. 
uh, I just had to glide into the market very slowly. Mm-hmm. Before I even launched the brand, uh, I had the watches ready and then I, I was doing some research, mm-hmm. some experiment. Mm-hmm. It's amazing how our mentality is. You know what r- experiments I tried? There was a lady who called me to buy watches for the husband. I mean, foreign brands, because mm-hmm. I didn't have my brand at the time. I went to meet her at the mall. I carried about seven different watch brands. And then I put my caveman watch in the in mix. There. Yeah. I presented all these watches in front of her. She went through each of them and she stopped at the caveman. She was like, oh, I love the package and I love the watch. Then I told her, yeah, it's a new brand. It's not out there yet, but it's an amazing brand. And she bought it. It gave me a feeling like, wait, if I, I put my watch yes. among all these big brands and mine was selected, then I have something, then I have on. something yeah. going on. Funny thing is that after the lady bought the watch, I now told her that it is an African brand. It is my own brand. I made the watch. She was like, wow, it's so amazing. You've done so well. It's really nice. But um, can I see the other ones again? <gasps> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So she was willing to bring it back. Then she changed her mind and took another one. So, you know, I was aware of the mentality that yes, we have. That it doesn't know. work. It doesn't last. Yeah, yes. and I knew that I had to do more work mm. to make an mm. impression. So I was well ready uh, knowing the challenges that I was going to face. Wow. <laughs> Huh. Now, you started with the how did people receive it in the initial beginning? Yeah, it actually went uh, quite better than I anticipated mm. because I had spent about three years selling and repairing watches. So, luckily, I had the, the clientele already. I had built the yeah. brand as the watch guy, the go-to mm. guy. So, that made it easier for me to launch my brand, kind of like hit the ground running. Mm. Because people already trusted my expertise yes. in watches. Yes. So that made it a bit easier than I thought. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Now, you decided to now start going through it. The first one was Blue Volta. Yeah, the Blue Volta. Um, how much was it going for then? It was going for two, 250 cities. And what was the average price of a watch then? I started with that. Okay. So that was my only watch model. Okay. It was for 250 cities. Yeah. That same watch, I mean, with some ad- improvements, mm. it's now selling for 1,800 cities now. Damn. I like. Yeah. But I, I, I honestly, I think anyone who has the first in a few pieces mm-hmm. of blue vault, I need mm-hmm. to hold it for like a they need to. collector's <laughs> prize. They now, need I to. really wish I had gotten a blue vault then. Yeah. Okay. Now, so from blue vault, what was the next one? Uh, we brought the woodpecker, the wood themed watches made of bamboo and sandal wood. And then the premium table came and yeah, then it rolled on. Now we have about. Oh, more than 15 different watch models and we keep making bespoke watches mm. one of one watches mm. for high profile mm. people mm. yeah mm. Mm. so uh we have 15 brands what, what goes into the naming of each watch brand yeah um well we we sit at the table the okay. whole creative team mm. uh we try to stay in line with yeah. some concepts sometimes yeah. it's about the look of the watch mm. i mean if i'm making a watch that is um that has a moon a moon design we're likely to call it the caveman luna or okay. something okay. so i mean the design of the watch also plays a part and also we try to keep the name in line with um like cave relics or mm. things you would find in a cave or mm. prehistoric mm. times okay. Uh, okay. we're about to launch the new caveman native mm. so all the names stay around the caveman concept mm. um mm. yeah mm. What led to the name Caveman? Yeah, you know, growing up, I had been a very uh, handcrafty person. Okay. Um, when I got the idea to, I mean, when the curiosity came and I started reverse engineering watches, um, I became extra, extra introverted. I could literally stay home for about three weeks and not even step out. I was drowned in breaking watches apart and reverse engineering them. Uh, sometimes my friends will call me, let's go and play basketball. And I'm like, ah, nah, Charlie, I'm working. I'm like, hey, you, you are in your cave, eh? You're in your cave inside. <laughs> that was the lighter note of it. You know, they always say, Charlie, always, always in your cave. cave. Won't you come out? But then while I was working, I always kept watching these um, uh, documentaries about geological findings mm-hmm. from the past. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I was quite intrigued by how these cavemen built things by hand. 
Uh, now you look at the, the pyramids, for example, we still have debates about how the pyramids were built. Were built really. And that should tell you the ingenuity of those people without the technology that we claim we have yeah. now. Um, so I was like, wait, I'm going to build a brand that will last the test of time to be generational. Something that we can say, oh, my grandfather's grandfather left it behind for mm. me. And it would have all the features of handcraft and the durability that comes with it. And um, the caveman, I, f I feel like this is the, uh, the beginning of, of humanity, mm. our side of the world. Looking back at our history from the dungeons, the slave trade, all the way and mm. all that, you know. The last time I was at Elmina and I went for the tour, went through the dungeons again, I had the whole cave mm. feeling like, oh, mm. this is where mm. our forefathers mm. came mm. through. Mm. You know, they passed through all this door of no return and they got, they got dispersed all over the world. They have now become influential people who have now come to take their throne, mm. you know. So the name has a lot of deep meanings for me. Okay, I like that. <laughs> now, was, and, and I can assume that the, the, the first person or clients in mind for mm -hmm. these watches were men. Yeah. How did it segue to women? You know, uh, I never had the perception from beginning that it was going to be a male brand. Mm. I kind of saw the caveman name like gender neutral, like mankind. I okay. never even um, thought about if not being gender neutral. Mm. I mean, it just happened that the watch industry by default is quite male dominated. dominated. Uh, but the funny aspect of that is that more women buy watches, but we sell more male watches. Hmm. You see where this is hmm. going? We buy more for all the men. Yes. So okay. we, we're selling more male watches, but we have but more the, female the biggest customers. clients are the females, yes. Yeah, so it tells you how much women appreciate their partners mm. and how much they buy watches for, for men. Because uh, when you have a gentleman in your life, you know one thing, a gentleman doesn't go without, it's a good watch. Mm. And the fact that we customize our watches, people have a lot of expensive watches, but they don't have any watch that is made for them. Mm with mm. details mm. of their mm. favorite color, mm. their signature, their name, maybe their uh, zodiac signs. So having a watch that is personalized to you is quite a big deal and it's been the greatest uh, go-to gift option for women. Why did you decide to start personalizing watches? Because I, I will assume it's, it's more expensive. In terms yeah. of labor yeah. and, 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 and resources to create yeah. one of one watches as mm -hmm. against creating multiple timepieces for, for as a range. Yeah. My, my creativity would not allow me. Uh, I keep getting this, you know, this crazy wave of ideas and um, it gives me that fulfillment and visioning something and getting to the table and putting it together. Mm. Um, yeah, so the ideas, you know, it just gives me that fulfillment. So I want to keep making something new all the time. Mm. So I'm really excited when I get new orders and somebody just comes through and say, hey, I need a watch for somebody. I'm like, yeah, give me details of the person. Mm. They give me all these details and I get my thinking cap on. I'm like, hey, I know what to do. Then it comes out. It's such fulfillment uh, that I get to put my creativity to constant use. Mm. It's more difficult, more labor intensive, more expensive. We are actually doing it for way too cheap. Mm way too cheap i mean to have a watch that is one of one in the watch industry it's a big deal it is it, it would you would have to break the bank for that but we've been doing it for quite um a very too fair an amount and mm. that might be changing anytime soon <laughs> <laughs> we beg we beg until we some of us get our one of one relax one. yeah yeah you should get it now <laughs> But yeah, now talk, I want to really understand your creative process. Mm -hmm. So you get into the office, you're in in a creative mood. Maybe you have an order of a one-on-one -on -one watch. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will assume you are in charge of the creative process yeah. at all times. Mm -hmm. Now, when you get in there, what is the process to start working on a one-on-one -on -one or on any watch design? Okay, so initially it was just, you know, me getting to my table, thinking, putting things together. But we started poking the international market mm. um, and then things got a bit more complex. We ah. realized that um, we are now being watched by the global space, not just Ghanaians. And then procedures had to be realigned with international standards. Mm. 
Uh, so the, the, the process became more complex. So when an order comes through, I'm likely to forward the details to the creative team. There are about six, seven people. There are sketch artists, there are 3D animators, there are graphic designers, photographers, videographers. It's a whole team that we sit down, put ideas on paper, we sketch, do 3D graphics and all that. Then they come up with the, the visuals. Mm. They bring it back to me. If I think it's great, it's missed the, the procedure standard of our production. Mm. Then I send it to the legal team who would now go through global patent databases to make sure we are not wow. infringing on anybody's copyright. And then it comes back to me. I send it back to production. Production is uh, broken down into about seven different phases. Some, the, the, the leather strap teams, about eight, nine people at the moment, they are making the leather straps according to your design. The watch case department, they are putting the watch case into CNC machines for cutting and polishing. The dial makers are making the dials, putting the numbers on the dials. It goes to an inking room where they put the ink on the dials according to the color that you want. It goes to the watch repair uh, assembly veterans that we have who would mm. assemble everything. Then it goes to quality control who would do a time graph check to make sure the watch is very accurate. They would do the water resistance test to make sure that um, it can uh, resist water. They do the drop test to make sure the watch would stand properly if it falls from your hand or from your pocket. It goes through a lot of tests from quality control. Then it goes to production. That would now do imagery and photography and all that. Bring it back to quality control to make sure nothing has been changed or, or affected. Then it goes wow. to the courier department. So now that would now package it to send. Package and send your watch out and keep you updated, tracking your watch until you receive it. Then it comes back to the shop. <laughs> Oh, wow, what a process. Yeah. So how many people are in the entire chain in, in Cape Man? Uh, what's, your, what's your workforce at We are about 25 and still growing. Um, we are about 25, but we've been overwhelmed. Mm. So we are onboarding new people. We are moving to new office spaces, new uh, factory spaces as we speak. So we've been expanding quite rapidly, mm. but very generically and well-controlled mm. expansion. Mm. 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 Uh, yeah. So we are, we're growing. I love that. I love that. I love that. <laughs> well, if you're just tuning in, I'm having a wonderful conversation yeah. with CEO of Cape Man Watches, CEO. Anthony Jimafe. Uh, and yes, he's speaking to us about all the exciting aspects of uh, the watchmaking process, as well how he's able to sort of uh, create so much value in, in the space. But I want to come to you as a young gentleman who is literally doing such incredible things. Um, and, 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 and largely a space which is very ageist because people, people attribute age to wisdom, to achievement. Have you had to deal with that at any point in your journey where people look at you, ah, he's too young to be doing this. Ah, he, <laughs> why? What's going on with it? That, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People usually don't expect um, that I'll be a young, a young person mm. until they meet me. They're like, ah, we've always thought it was somebody older. Because the watch space is an old craft. Mm. Um, I've always been an old soul mm. growing up. My preferences are not the usual in terms of my peers and what they like. Uh, I'm the type to always listen to orchestra. And, really? Um, yeah, so I would choose an orchestra show over the other types, you know what I mean? So I've The been, night out. <laughs> yeah. You're not a loud party no, all night no, kind no, of person. No, no. Okay. I, I can't stand loud places. Really? Um, hmm. Yeah, I can stand loud places and places with a lot of people. Mm. I get this anxiety, <laughs> you know? Really? Yeah. So I like to be, um, to have quiet spaces a lot. Mm. Um, mm. Like music instruments, the violin, the pianos, uh, and all that. So yeah, I've, I, I know I've been an old soul my mm. whole life growing up. Um, uh, sometimes even find my age mates as childish sometimes <laughs> in the things they do. I can so, imagine, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think oh, that had helped me to, you know, embrace this um, age-old craft mm, very well. Mm, and I appreciate that. <laughs> now, in terms of empowering the younger ones, because mm -hmm. it, you are literally a walking ambassador of what a young, a young person can achieve uh, in a relatively short amount of time if you put the work to it. Yeah. How, how do, you, do you actively work towards empowering young people and, and in, in what 
avenues do you try and do that? Uh, I try to yeah. do as much as I can with the limited time that I have. Mm. Uh, one of the ways I did that was to write a book because I was not getting enough time to engage people as much as I would love to. So I put my experiences and my principles and my strategies into a book mm. uh, called The Inside Job that I sell out there. Uh, it's on my website as well. That's one way I do that. I also take all these speaking engagements. I speak to um, uh, young entrepreneurs like mm. myself mm. a lot. Mm. Um, yeah, and moments like this. I mean, we are talking about all these things and people would listen and learn yeah. a thing or two yeah. from it. Uh, I also support um, entrepreneurs in the smallest ways financially as I can. Uh, there are times I go to events to speak and um, I realize some of them have challenges with some equipment, something that I can afford on the spot. I just wow. buy that. Um, yeah, I, I support in the smallest way that I can, you know, because I've been in the space where I needed so much support and yes. nobody would would help. Now let's talk about that. Yeah. Um, starting it off, yeah. because doing uh, starting off anything such as this is very capital intensive. Mm -hmm. How did you get the support to start? Yeah, it's very important to start small. Mm. Um, you know, when we all start a business, we have this very elaborate business plans with huge figures as capital it's not bad to do that but while you you have that business plan make sure your business can also be broken down into small units mm. that you can start on your own mm. so while you are searching for capital you are still actually running the business um i think it's crazy when people put business plans together that they can't even kick start it without investors that, I think, is a very uh, wild expectation. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to break down your business into minute components that you can kickstart on a small scale. Mm. Before the investor comes in, he wants to see something happening, you know. Mm. So that's what I did. Uh, I was fund-seeking, but I still broke my um, expectations down into very basic components and mm. started small. Mm. Um, I realized along the line that I was even beginning to look for help more than actually working. Huh. So I was like, wait, I'm doing this whole thing wrong. Mm. Uh, I'm spending more time chasing investors than actually working. And it's a wild goose chase in most of the cases. So I stopped and started focusing on my work. Mm. I changed my mindset to, you know what, I have a dream. There's a place I want to take this brand to. You are either with me or get out of my way. Mm. That's how I changed my mindset. So, because most of the times so when we are chasing investments, we are from meeting to meeting to meeting. Don't waste your whole day. You waste your time. You realize that the whole day you've not worked and you're having meetings. That don't lead to anything. Mm. So, I just changed my mindset. Hey, let me focus on my work. I'm going to build what I'm building. When I had the idea, mm. I didn't know you in the first place. I didn't build my dream because of you. So I'm going to still keep pushing. If help comes, fine. If it doesn't come, fine. But I didn't stop searching for the help. But I made sure I wasn't searching for help more than actually working on my craft. Mm, amazing. Yeah. What is the biggest challenge that, as a young entrepreneur, you faced starting off? Mm, the biggest challenge I faced was quite an unexpected one. It was just that people wouldn't leave me alone to do what I wanted to do. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> People wouldn't leave me alone. Like, um, I go somewhere to sell a watch and the person will pull a chair for me. Nah, young man, sit down. What do you do? <laughs> and I be like, hey, I sell watches. Like, yeah, you know, it's a, but apart from that, what, what do you do? What else do you do? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I, this is what I do. I sell watches. People just wouldn't leave me alone. Everybody had advice for me. Mm. Everybody mm. had advice mm. for me. Mm. Hey, you know, you can, you can do this, but go and look go for and a, for job. a job. And... Yeah, you can do this one on the side, but go and get a job. I'm like, oh God, not again. Just leave e me be. Everybody had advice for me. Everybody was on me to stop what I was doing and get a job. Oh, wow. The people who tell me I inspired them now, the people who told me to go and look for a job. It's so crazy that <laughs> sometimes I'm like, hey, what if I listen wow. to you? Wow. You know, but I'm an all or nothing guy. Mm. Uh, when I have an idea, I have a passion for something, I dive in, I fold my sleeves and I get into it. I don't know how to do things halfway. Mm. So I wasn't going to be able to 
do the watch thing on the side. Mm. It had to be all out for me. So that was a challenge I faced. People just wouldn't leave me alone. Amazing. Yeah. And well, look at you now, eh? <laughs> yeah. But coming back to um, the brand, you, you you did something interesting where you got um, celebrities mm -hmm. to endorse your brand. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you still are. I recently saw that you signed Jocelyn. She looked yep. fire in the pictures, yeah, by the way. She's and the watch looks amazing on yeah. her, by the way. <laughs> um, now, do influencers, yep. brand ambassadors, do they really get the beyond the publicity they give the brand? Do they really get you the numbers you're looking for? Uh, that's a very good question. Sometimes it is not immediate. Sometimes it is not direct. Mm. Um, top of mind awareness might not be a direct selling strategy, but it all adds up to the whole package. Mm. Uh, when I put an ambassador on, it's very rarely do we have a tunnel sale-oriented vision. Mm. It's a bigger picture. Uh, the brand appeal, the aesthetics, the brand respects the, the status of the brand. Mm. Those things are achieved a lot more mm. with the influencers than actually trying to be sale-oriented with them. We do both, but I think uh, it's a bigger percentage of the aesthetics, the awareness, uh, the reputation of the brand, uh, the brand value and all those things. Uh, we have other methods that are very more sale oriented and those sometimes don't even have to do with influencers. So it's a bit of a balance, mm. you know, we're working on the aesthetics and the, the, the visuals and, and all that while we are also doing sales with other strategies. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, now, for a lot of people who see your strategy and think okay maybe the best way to go will be to you know gather a lot of influencers <laughs> get the the bus going do a whole public what, what do you tell them <laughs> you know you you can't substitute quality products mm. with anything mm. um we've even had opportunity to work with some influencers but we've kept it on hold it's mm. a whole deliberate thing um uh, you need to work on the product first of all. Mm. You need to have a plan. You need to be financially stable because, I mean, these things don't come cheap, At you all. know. You need to pay people well. It's something that Ghanaians, I think we have a problem with. Mm. People think that um, services should be rendered for them just because they say please mm. or just because they know somebody. Mm. And that's the reason why our industry is not very lucrative. There's not enough money going around. Mm. We should be willing to pay for services, you know, mm. so money would circulate in our, our own system. Mm. A typical Ghanaian would rather pay a white man and come and beg his fellow Ghanaian to do it for free. Yeah. So we need to change that. And yeah, so it's not just about influencers, it's a type of influencers. Mm. Now, before you even approach somebody who is, of course, um, way up there, they also want a balance. Yes. They want to make sure the brand they are working with complements them as well. So if you don't build your brand to that level, they wouldn't even be willing to sit down and trade with you in the first place because it has to make sense for both brands. Absolutely. You know? So Absolutely. the most important thing is building your brand first of all. Then the investors, the influencers would even come. Okay. Now, um, I, I, uh, Jenna, if we can go back to the An Angelique one. Angelique. So you, I, I've seen that you, you've done... Um, Timeless pieces, very specific pieces for certain um, high-end influencers yep. and, and celebrities. Yep. Talk me through that, and and who who do you th do you sit down and say, okay, I need this person to be rocking my piece, or I need to send this person a timeless piece. Usually, just like I said, I changed my mindset a long time ago and started focusing on my craft. Uh, I'm a very firm believer in the universe. I mean, that's more uh, common mm. across religions. Mm. If somebody doesn't believe in God, they do believe in the universe. Mm. So I like to use that word. I'm a true believer in the universe. Um, if your intentions are pure, if you respect, you give back to the universe, oh, it well, redirects you. Um, so I just maintain that energy and focus on my work. Most of the things that happen with this brand comes to us. Mm. Most of them. I don't go searching for them. It's just organic. It yeah, just very organic, you. yes. A lot of the, the most generic viral things we've done have been organic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a lot. Like Beyonce's watch, for example. Yes. It came to us. 
the order came to us. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Wow. Now, how did it work? How was it like working on a Beyonce watch? Uh, that was very exciting. We spent almost two months on that watch. Really? <laughs> We spent almost two months on the watch because the concept I came up with was quite a very difficult one. Mm. You know, I was like, wait, Beyonce, uh, the fan base is called a beehive. Mm. She's called a queen bee. Yes. Okay, let me start from there. And I know the the family, they have a thing with the number four. I mean, mm. Jay-Z, yes. 444, four, 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 yes. daughter, Blue Ivy, which is Ivy, mm. four Roman numerals. I was going to play with the number four. And the queen bee, okay, so this is what we did. We went around beehives and collected fallen bee wings, 444 pieces of bee wings that I used to make the dial of the watch. We took a honeycomb, put it on our creative desk in the middle in a glass, and the sketch artist would sketch the honeycomb out around the watch, and I hand carved the watch case like a honeycomb rose gold case like a honeycomb 444 b wings that we have to preserve we have to work with it work with it and turn it into the dial of the watch um it's a very difficult process uh my workers will stay with me till like almost midnight wow we worked on it but i was so happy the fulfillment the whole team got we were high-fiving each other when it was yes. done and the pr was great so yeah we started little wins. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Now, speaking of staying in late till midnight and all, do you have a social life? With uh, friends and do you hang out? And how do you unwind beyond classical music? Uh, it used to be basketball. Now it's golf. Okay. Um, yeah, I play golf. Um, when I'm working and I'm quite overwhelmed, my brain is just too loaded. I go to the piano. I play the piano. Oh, you do? Yes. Very well, I'm sure. Not too well. Okay. I've been self-teaching and okay. I can play a few tunes. Okay. Okay. How exciting. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I moved to the piano to, you know, release mm. some stress. I mm -hmm. go play basketball. Apart from that, I'm the type to probably check out a new restaurant, a fine dine. Okay. Try so some... if you want to check out the Beyonce watch creation, yeah. go onto our Facebook page now. Um, and we have that video as well going on there. We see mm -hmm. how it's so intricate. Oh, my goodness. It is. It is. Oh, my goodness. It is. <laughs> like, this is incredible. Yeah. Okay, now back to it. <laughs> so if you want to unwind, you play golf. the piano or, or golf. Yeah, golf is... And then that, that, that's it. Piano, that. golf, check out a new restaurant, okay. try some fancy food. Okay. That's Fine basically. dining is your thing. Yeah. What is your favorite meal? Um, Favorite meal? Oh, quite a few. But I'm, a, I'm more of a salmon guy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Um, how do you like your salmon? Um, Medium well. Okay. Okay. Medium well is fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I like that. All right. <laughs> now, um, fine dining or... Okay. What... What are you not willing to explore when it comes down to your 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 your, your taste palette? Uh, what is too much for you? Uh, I'm quite a very traditional guy. Okay. Um, I may not go out of my way to eat the non-usual things. Mm. I'm not too adventurous with food. Okay. I like to stick with what I know. <laughs> uh, I know people who like to travel around, try the frog legs yes, and the snakes. Yeah. And all. You no, are no, just no, no, not. No, 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 no. You're safe. Yeah. Nice safe. and I good. I play safe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you had some time off, are you an uh, out of town, out of country person or an out of city person? Uh, out of country. The funny thing is, I could be out of the country, but spend the whole time inside my hotel room and come back to Ghana. <laughs> no way. You do no exploration. No, no, no. no, no. You're not a, like a tourist, tourist kind of person. By default, I want to be in my room. Huh. By default. Unless there is, I mean, a reason. I'm like, oh, do I have to? Like, yeah, you have to. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> then I go. But if you leave me alone, uh -huh. I'm very likely to be in my space. Wow. I'm kind of scared of people. <laughs> I can, I can get People that. The social scary. anxiety. <laughs> I get that. A little, a little too much crowd yeah, sometimes. I yeah. love people, but I'm scared of people. You like them in small doses. Yeah, I'm yeah. the type to help somebody, and then when they call me back to thank me, I wouldn't pick the call. I am just like that. Yeah, too. I'm like, yes, uh, yes, I've helped yes. you, but it's stay. okay. Yes, yes. Okay, don't, 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 yeah, don't. Yeah, that's what I mean me by again. that. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. okay. Now, it's, it's a fair session to make that you're one of Ghana's most. <laughs> sought after bachelors 
Ah, I don't think I'm sought after. You don't? No, no, I'm not sought after. Uh, okay. I think people kind of assume that, um, I don't know, but, well, I don't think it's Ghanaian vibe or culture for girls to approach gentlemen. Yeah, so maybe somebody might think something, but they keep it to themselves. Mm. So I don't think I'm sought after as people might think. Mm. I keep it to myself. I'm not in some crazy spaces. Um, Just like to keep it nice and simple. Yeah. Are you in love? Uh, yeah, with a couple of things. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, evasive way. Are you? Uh, let me be I'm more a, direct. I'm a passionate person, so okay. I'm in love with a couple of things. Okay. Yeah. We, we would love you to be in love with a couple of things, including yeah. watches. Yeah. Uh, but are you in love with a person? I'm in love with a couple of things and a couple of people. Okay. My mother. Oh, my being goodness. Part of it. <laughs> wow. How slick. How slick. Yeah. Okay. Are, 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 you, are you on the market? Um, be more direct. Let me be more direct then. Honestly... I don't entertain some kind of conversations that I'm not ready to have. Mm. Uh, out of respect for people, I'm like, eh, you know, I don't want to waste your time. Mm. Mm. I have some things on my table at the moment. Mm. I don't want to um, have somebody having expectations of me that I, I can't meet. That. Yeah. It's yeah. very unfair to the people. Yeah. So I don't let it grow even to that. Yeah. I'm, I'm likely to let the person know. Uh, upon first contact, yeah. what it is. Yeah, Your first love is watches and then everything else falls in place. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I'm, but I'm, yeah, I do also keep my, my personal life to very much yes, out of the public. Yes, I mean, yes, yes. People go on my social media and they don't see any trace of my personal life. Mm. It's just watches, awards, business seminars. Mm. That's how I like to keep my life. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, know me for my work and nothing else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but let me now segue into the economy. People need to have money in their pocket before they can be able to purchase uh, a luxurious piece, yep. time piece. Yep. Um, has, I'm trying to word this right. Um, does it directly affect your business when things are up in the air and topsy turvy? It affects and, everybody. Mm. It affects all of us. Mm. I mean, the crazy conversion rates. Um, I'm still very much an import person. Mm. There are things about a watch that I can't do. In Ghana, yes. No matter what I do, I can't make watch batteries, for example. Mm. So I'm still importing some very little components here and there. And um, the dollar rate, it makes everything very difficult. And uh, sometimes the customers will be like, oh, this price was this just mm. last year. Mm. Now it's but this. Now it's this, yeah. Yeah, we all feel the pain. Mm. You know? Yeah. Have, have there... Are there policies that are allowing to make entrepreneurs such as yourself's life easier? And are you, are, are you getting access to it? Um, I wish the answer was yes. Um, in theory, they are. Mm. I in mean, practice? Yeah, in theory, they are. I've sat in a lot of seminars and watched the authority officials and heads talk about this policy and that policy. And I just smile and shake my head. Mm. You know, it sounds very rosy when they're saying it, but... Go and try and good mm, luck. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> it becomes something else completely. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, do you tend to shy away from politics? Uh, I don't think I present myself um, into that space. Mm. I'm actually, look, I'm genuinely too busy mm. with my work. Mm. My work is a very demanding one. It doesn't leave me room to pursue other things that would be time consuming. Mm. So it's not even it's not even a decision not to, but my work just doesn't leave any room for any other thing. Mm. So uh, I'm not a very politics person. Doesn't mean I don't care about politics. I need to know what is happening in the country because it affects all of us. Absolutely. But actively I'm not I don't have room to engage actively in political agendas. No. Mm, I like. I appreciate that. Yeah. Now, on the issue of the watches, um, I've seen some very interesting timepieces. Ah, I, I, I know where this is going. <laughs> and you've pushed the envelope on some of them. I know where this is going. One of them, which I had a friend uh, that, that purchased the timepiece, which, which was very, very sexy. Yep. Um, you pushed the envelope quite a bit. <laughs> Why? Yeah, well, I'm not the first watchmaker to put out erotica watches. Mm. Uh, erotica watches are, are things that have been there from the history of watchmaking. Right. I am actually very 
modest on my erotica design. Are you really? Yeah, that okay. is me being very modest with it. Uh-huh. There are other very uh, vivid ones, <laughs> <laughs> very wild ones that uh, you shy away from. I shy away from. So the ones that I have are actually very decent. Uh-huh. We'll take it. We'll take <laughs> yeah. it. Whenever I look at it, I'm like, yeah, it's time for uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, perfect yeah. timing. We, we, it's perfect timing. Yeah. Aligns <laughs> just right. Um, yep. But what else are you willing to ex- experiment with when it comes to watches? Oh, um, when it comes to watches or when it comes to time-telling devices in general, the next projects we are working on. Ah, should I even say this here? Please, go. No, 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 no. no. Oh, Anthony. Anthony, give us something. Oh, Anthony, don't do this. I beg. Let me... (laughs) Don't let me grovel. Just send a little bit. Well, what we're doing is in line with um, the Big Ben UK... Mm -hmm. And there's a lot. Ooh, ooh, that'll be exciting. Yeah. Ooh, that'll be exciting. Yeah, so okay. Ghana and something. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> okay, that'll be exciting. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll, 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 we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Coded we'll language, it there. <laughs> but you get it. Now, in terms of uh, the what in watch watch industry, I also seen that you you started doing like bracelet type things. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Are we going to be entering into those um, Van Cleef no, sort of vibes no, where we're getting? No. Um, nice jewelry, jewelry no. along along with it, caveman jewelry. No, you know, there's a difference between a watch brand and a fashion brand. Mm. Um, some people get it confused when you mention the Michael Kors and others. They are not really mentioned when it comes to watch making. They are more of a fashion brand. Mm. Mm. We are building a watch brand, you know, so we have to stay true to that. We wouldn't put our logo this or that just because it will sell. We are mm. very disciplined with the focus, so. Mm. Uh, I think the furthest we have gone had been the bracelets and then cufflinks because mm. those are very much together with of, okay. watches. I mean, they're okay. not a stretch from watches. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's basically, I think, going to just stick with that. So we, we, we won't see more um, detailed bracelets? But no. I mean, I would explore the creativity around the bracelets. Mm. I had also finished... Chain? Uh, very unlikely. <laughs> you know, that's moving further from the hand. But it's from so, the wrist. It, it goes on the, it goes to the neck I've and then it's actually, so far off. <laughs> I've actually uh, finished courses on stone setting. Ooh. I'm merging um, stone setting with watch making okay. now. So I've started putting stones around my watches for some particular people. Um, yeah. So you're going to start seeing diamond iced out caveman watches. Oh, that'll very be exciting. Soon. Yeah. That'll be exciting. Um, would you also consider maybe um, uh, cubic zirconians for those that may not necessarily have the yes. means for, yes. for diamonds? Yeah, there'll be different ranges of them, okay. different type of stones. Okay, yes. okay. I mean, that's exciting. <laughs> um, now, you said you are steady. So that means you're constantly adding value to yourself in terms of... Yep. Okay. I'm all, thing about me, the reason why I'm not able to rest is that uh, every time I have something going on, after a few months, I'm like, uh, what next? Mm. What next? You know, I get bored very quickly with my own creativity. Um, so I'm very hard on myself. Mm. Uh, what's the next stage of growth? What's the next stage of growth? So it took me some time to do this stone setting course, but I'm done with it. And so I feel like there's something new, exciting on my table. Mm. You know, if not, mm. I get bored. Mm. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you must always constantly be reinventing yourself. Yeah, reinventing. That's the plan. I mean, till some time. And the issue of reinvention, would you ever consider teaching others academia? Uh, well, the people who work in my factory, uh, most of them can make a full watch. Mm. I mean, a because type they've of watched watch. you for so long. Yes, and I've taught them. I've. Mm. I've basically trained the whole team and all the different departments and nobody came to me with years of experience they all came to learn from scratch because Mm. i had to pass down all the knowledge all around so yeah i've trained people who can put a watch together and you know we high five each other like wow that's beautiful Mm. you know so yeah we'll get to a point where i'm considering horology into the into the school system Huh? I, was, I was coming to that. Yeah. Are you going to create a caveman school? Uh, it's not a plan at the moment. But it's something what, what that's... What we're doing is very um, difficult. Mm. So it doesn't leave you a lot of room to, ex- to do other things. You know, there's so much important things on the table. So when ideas come, we even just put them down. We don't even start exploring them now. Mm. 
there are some milestones we want to achieve. After that, Four. then we can say, okay, let's look at other things. Okay. Because setting up business structures is very difficult. Mm. But that's the key to a uh, good business. You need to set it up in a way that you can step back and watch the structure work, you know. Mm. And the structure is working and not dropping in standard or quality, but exponentially growing in quality. And that's taking some time to do, but we are on it. On the issue of quality, and you mentioned about how um, one of the processes is going through legal to mm -hmm. get IP. So, do you do you do you copyright all the designs and everything that you come out with? Yep, the ones that are gen like originally ours. Mm. You know, there are some watch designs that are general, like general. It's, everyone uses that yeah, style. Yeah, everybody okay. uses that okay. style. Like most classic styles mm. are not. Uh, owned by anybody mm. so we have a mm. blend of both mm. you know mm. some of our watch designs are not unique to us mm. okay. some of them most are. of them are yeah so the ones that are unique to us we patent we do copyright on mm. them mm. the ones that are globally used because sometimes somebody wants something that blends into the global space mm. and then there are the other people who say no oh, we want to see elements of ghana in it mm. you know so mm. it's a blend of both yeah now on the issue of copywriting mm -hmm. And then a lot of people have said in Ghana and Africa, the copyright laws are not as strong. Um, you are doing that. You're going through the system. Does it protect you the way it will protect someone in the UK? Um, funny thing is that we have not had any... Nobody has poked <laughs> it yet. Mm. But we make sure we have all the systems in place. We're not just doing copyright. I mean, it's a global thing. So it's a global database. Mm. And we have the legal department in charge of that. Uh, we've not had any issues with that yet. Mm -hmm. So even so, once it's once you someone does something, then you know how to yeah. To even now, to even now with the watch up. design, mm -hmm. let me take the blue watch for example, yeah. the blue Volta. The Pantone, the shade of the blue, is, is unique very unique to, to us. Oh. You know, we had to 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 bake the dials to a particular temperature to get that shade of blue. So I can spot a fake from a mile away if it ever came out because there is no way you'll be able to know the Pantone, the shade of the blue, according to the intricate details. So have people created fakes of okay, Caveman watches? Thankfully, it? not yet. Okay. Okay. Thankfully. At least none that you've seen. Not that I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Now you also mentioned teaching all mm -hmm. your staff coming in fresh, teaching them everything in this part of the world. And I think no, I think generally, <laughs> as as employers, yeah, you stand a risk of losing employees when they feel they have learned everything they possibly can and move on, yeah. leaving you with a vacuum because you have to train all. How yeah. do you? deal with it when these situations come up? Uh, it used to worry me a lot more from the beginning, mm. uh, the 10 over rate for employment, but I realized that it's normal. Mm. I mean, um, it's, it's hard. I mean, the industry in which I am is a very perfection worshipping industry. And unfortunately, with Ghanaians generally, perfection is not a thing they worship. Mm because mm. mostly average is good enough mm. in, in the Ghanaian setting mm. and uh, had become an evil person pushing perfection all the time. Mm. But that's the only way to succeed in this industry because the people we are competing against are perfectionists. Are perfectionists. Yeah. So it's very hard and I've come to accept that it's normal that out of maybe one out of ten, I'll get a perfectionist or somebody at least who understands the concept mm. of it. Mm. So it used to bother me, but I've come to understand that for where I am, it's going to be a norm mm. and um, we keep juggling around we find the key people we have a very core foundation of employees that um, are very i mean they are great mm. people will come and go but the core is always there yeah like so it's that. fine it doesn't bother me much mm, okay. no, no anymore now june is mental health awareness month for men yeah uh as a man <laughs> <laughs> how do you deal with your down moments do you have such moments? So, <laughs> this is a funny thing. That this particular tune I love to play is mm -hmm. called uh, River Flows in You okay. by Yeruma. Mm. So, anytime I'm at work and I'm um, getting the anxiety and all that, mm. I take deep breaths, deep breaths. I go and sit by my piano and I start playing. Mm. So, when my work is here, I'm like, oh, boss is having a bad day. Because <laughs> he's always playing that tune yeah. when he's like in a bad space. Yeah. So, 
Um, I don't think the Ghanaian culture is very heavy on therapy and all that. Our uh, Isha Allah is the mm, therapy. Maybe we need to open up more mm. to seek therapy. Mm. It's not our culture, but I think we need to have that awareness. Like I mentioned, my escape is either piano or golf. Mm. But I'm having a very bad day and I can't focus on work. I go and play golf. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Have you ever had a day where you almost said, you know what, I won't do this again? And what day was this? A lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times. Yeah. Then one instance, and what, what, what got you to the cliff, and what walked you back from the cliff? Well, look, the things that walk me there are a lot. There are countless times that I'm like, damn, this is too hard. Mm. I'm like, wow, now I understand when businesses fold up. Mm. I used to think that they are failures mm. or judge mm. them, but mm. oh, now it makes so much mm. sense. Mm. Now nah, this is too difficult. Uh, I would never judge anybody who falls <laughs> up again. Um, I get home and I'm sitting on the staircase like, damn, who sent me? Charlie. Um, one of the most difficult questions I've ever been asked is, would you do this all over again if you could go back in time? Would you? I've never had the answer for that. Hmm. I just go like, hmm, and I never because find Because when you think answer. of the, the struggles you have to go through again to get to this point, yeah. you don't know if you want to live Sometimes through it. Sometimes you start to see a contradiction because you want to be successful to enjoy life mm. but is it contradicting if you are getting successful but not enjoying life mm. Mm. what is really important you know <laughs> you know all these questions will yeah. pass through, through your mind because it's very difficult it's very difficult working with people especially mm. um a little error from the workers can very detrimental to the business um i've had crazy experience uh i uh, made watches for this celebrity um i went to present the watch uh, the person was very excited taking pictures of the watch and then she goes like oh wait they got my name wrong eh? yeah you know and there were a lot of people there you know i felt my knees actually buckle like uh, yes. i turned red my like goodness. god you know, the embarrassment of it, you know, and then you like quality control. It went through this. How did you this, not check it? Yeah, yes. the guy who, I mean, did the, the customization, like, did you not see this? And all they can tell you is, it actually becomes a staring competition. <laughs> <laughs> they have They're no like, reasons. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, they have no reasons for you. They have no excuses. They, then they just tell you sorry. But like I said, it's a perfection yes. worshipping yeah. uh, industry. So... Yeah. Even a 0.001% error is not allowed. Mm. And mm. Mm. it's hard. I mm. mean, I've had those moments. Yeah. yeah. But what keeps me going? Uh, also a lot of things. Mm. Uh, I, I respect my workers a lot. You know, sometimes I sit back and just watch them with admiration. Like, mm. damn, can you imagine these guys just waking up at dawn every day, getting into a trot trot, the hassle to get to work. And they are always here. They don't play the true ones. They are, they're always here. Yeah. The dedication, I'm just watching them while their age mates are out there doing crazy things. Yeah. See how dedicated they are. So I, I view the brand like for them, okay? And I'm making sure that while the brand is growing, mm. they are growing as well. Um, and that keeps me motivated. Like, mm. I need to make these guys proud. They are literally sacrificing their life for this brand. Yeah. I need to make them proud. And I'm so happy when there are times we need to go pick an award. We all go shopping. Yeah. We all climb the stage and okay. pick the award. Those guys, I mean, yeah. apart from the CSR things that we do, uh, drilling boreholes for communities. And, you know, when you see all these people celebrating and dancing because they finally have clean water. Mm something you and I take for granted. Mm. It's a very uh, teary moment for me, knowing that people have been suffering, drinking some kind mm. of water for mm. so long. Mm. And if I have a business that is blessed so much to be able to bless others, there's no way I'm stopping. I like that. I yeah. like that a lot. Uh, well, if you're just tuning in, again, I'm still sitting here. It was supposed to be a relatively short one, but I'm enjoying myself a little too <laughs> yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're keeping it a little longer than we have vision. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs>
So if you have any questions for Anthony, yeah. CEO of Caveman Watches, please send it in 0532 307. Yeah. But one event I think you should definitely come on is um, the 3 FM Family Day Out. So in okay. June, we have a family day out. We're, we're getting all our, our oh, families June together. Almost... Uh, sorry, July. July, mm -hmm. okay. July 27th, <laughs> we're having all our families gather in one place um, at Marina Park. Um, okay. at, um, Lake, lakeside around that side so yeah. we, we want you to come on board that would be the, nice the, dad, the dads deserve some nice watches so yeah that would be nice let's, let's talk about <laughs> it let's talk about it <laughs> um but yeah now when it comes down to um you mm -hmm. and and your journey if you had not become a watchmaker what would you have been i kind of love things that have to do with strategizing mm. um creativity mm -hmm. Um, what would I have been? I don't know. I would have just loved to be on the creative team of mm. anything exciting. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. I don't know what okay. in particular, but okay. yeah. What's your favorite process or part of creating a watch? The design stage. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the design stage. Then you can throw ideas around. Yeah, throw ideas around. Mm. Yeah. Do you feel the need to constantly make your watches Ghanaian? As against well, then international. No, mm. it's an international brand. It's mm. an international space that we are seeking to play in. Mm. So it has to appeal to the international market. Mm. You know, we understand that it's from home. You know, it needs to have identity traces of our origin. Mm. But the design should be a global design, but with hint of our origin. Mm. Yeah. What's the furthest place you've had to ship your watch to? The furthest? Um, uh, Japan. Ooh. Japan, yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, Japan. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I was at the Grammys recently, Ooh. the last Grammys, yes. and then um, it was really surprising to be on the streets of Los Angeles and a random person goes like, caveman. <gasps> I was like, <laughs> you know, and this guy actually followed me back to where I was to buy about eight watches. What? I was like, okay. Now that's crazy. Like, just Are a random serious? person. On, yeah, it was crazy. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Um, is, is there a pressure to always top up or top what you keep doing? A constant pressure where you're, you're mm -hmm. living and how, how do you deal with it? It's a personal thing. Like I mentioned, I'm very hard on myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to always do better. We need to always keep improving. So even with the workers, I tell them, hey, I mean, if you used to work somewhere that you were being applauded for something, if you come here, I'm like, oh, it's normal, mm -hmm. do better. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep pushing you and pushing you. Uh, so yeah, it's a personal problem, good <laughs> problem that I have. I don't think, I just put a timeline to it that I'm going to work very hard Mm. I'm going to run twice as fast so I could stop earlier. Mm. That's the plan. Because the way at which I move, I can't do it for too long. Mm. I would literally mm. burn out. So I'm doing it very intensively for a shorter period mm. to make sure that by then all the structures are laid back, then I can more of supervise the structure. Mm. You know, so yeah. It's okay. a time-bound uh, approach. Now, what's the next five years looking like? Oh, the next five years. Boy, uh, we call it the international phase. Mm. Um, so last year, we started poking the international market, um, visiting here and there, seeing what the economy is like here and there, making inquiries around. Because the plan had been to run it locally for five years. Mm. Then the next five years, we start taking international strides. So we're going to have a flagship store in London, yeah, in yeah, Los We are Angeles. actually going to do an event in London in, uh, in July. Oh. Yeah, there's something very huge about to happen with the brand and we are setting up the foundations in the UK. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm. So the next five years, we're going to explore international markets, the US, the UK, look at the UAE and then um, South Africa, Nigeria. Mm, mm. Amazing. World domination is upon us. Yeah. <laughs> we love we it. We love it. Out. We love it. We love it. We love it. Well, um, 
at this point, I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here because yep. there, there are too many questions and not enough time. But I'm actually really excited um, for the next five years of Cape yeah. Man watches. Yeah. I have a personal Cape Man watch, guys. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. By the way, I have a customized <laughs> my name inside, um, and I think it's one of my my most prized possessions. Um, I only bring it out when I'm going out to a nice place. Keep it very well. Uh-huh. No, no, share collector's piece, well. Charlie. I'm telling you, collector's piece. Um, I look forward to. Even more exciting things from the brand. Um, and I, I know the, the, there's one piece you did that has like some interesting layouts. It, that, it, something. you I've, I've seen it either in a social media or something. Really? There's one piece of yours that has something or the other. I mean, I, I remember. Yeah. Like one of them that tells time in a different way or... I mean, I mean, maybe, maybe I also, or maybe I'm giving you an idea of what you can well, do. Well, yeah. maybe I, I kind of, yeah. We have moon face watches. Aha, uh-huh, perhaps that is, yeah. is, yeah. Okay. The moon face uh, is, uh, is something we put into the watch that mimics how time was told in the past by using the sun, the star, and the moon positions. Okay, that's probably it, yeah. Yeah, yeah so also, we have a moon face yeah, element in some yeah, of our automatic yeah. watches, yeah. Aha, uh-huh, now the question, uh, will you ever have like a, a fully um, automated watch? like a, Automatic watches? Yeah, like a... Like Apple ones. Oh, the smart watches. Yes, a smart watch, yes. Smart watches. Would we ever have a caveman smart watch? I, I don't want to say never... Use the word never, mm. but not it's for not now. in line with what we do. Okay. The thing is that smart watches are not even made by watchmakers. <laughs> yeah. They're made They're by, made by <laughs> IT. IT guys. <laughs> you get it. So we won't, we won't see an, uh, at least not now, that not we'll now. see an IT not version now. of, yeah. of a K-Man yeah. watch. Okay. Okay. They are, not, they are not replacements for traditional watches. Mm. No. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They're not replacements. Okay. 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 All right. <laughs> well, that's exciting to see. And of course, um, reminding you that if you want something authentically Ghanaian, then you definitely need to be reaching out to Anthony's team at Caveman Watches. Uh, their location is in East Legon. Yes. Yep. Uh, okay. And they have like a special showroom and all of that that you go in. So it's like what? Cognac and champagne and stuff kind of show. And I need to find a good man that I can go and buy a Caveman Watch for. <laughs> so where are the men? Where are the men? Where are the men? Where are the men? Oh. Don't worry. Don't worry. We'll, we'll surprise about Sansu. soon. Yeah. <laughs> but Anthony, thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank it's been you. a thoroughly, I've thoroughly enjoyed myself with this conversation, and we look forward to even bigger exploits from the Caveman brand over the next few years. Now, final words on how we can reach out, how we can follow you on social media, and everything else inclusive. Caveman, uh, we are very active on social media. Cavemanwatches.com mm-hmm. or the social media platforms are Caveman Watches on all social media platforms. Uh, the telephone number is 055-751-6744. Okay. 055-671-6744. Did I get it right? I think I, I, I did. I think you did. Yeah, I, think you did. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> yeah, so we're very active on social media, yes. the website, the showroom. We have two showrooms, actually. Okay. Uh, one is um, just two buildings beside the Astro Turf on the Jingano Road. Mm. Uh, on your left, just uh, two buildings after the Astro Turf. When you're coming from American House, heading towards Ajingano, two yes, buildings yes, after the football yes, park yes, on your yes, left. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah, and then the new one that we just opened uh, last month is directly opposite the East Legon Executive Fitness Club. Right, yes. The yeah, the gentleman must, They must be patronizing you along. I was like, ah, <laughs> right there, walk in there, get a right nice time. Right the road, yeah. Amazing, amazing. Oh. Anthony, thank you so much for coming through. Oh, yeah. And that was my fabulous conversation with the one and only Anthony Jemafair of Caveman Watches. But reminding you that if you're a woman, you need premium sanitary pads from Reflows. Oh, and of course, you get baby diapers at a great price that won't break the bank. Why choose Reflows? It's the best on the market. Now in price and quality. Quality you can trust because they use the finest materials for superior comfort and protection. Easy on your wallet. And you get the quality you deserve without overspending. And uh, whether you're choosing from the gold super soft cotton for normal flow or purple plus for, uh, pads for heavy flow with extra length and secure four wing design. Or you're choosing our comfortable baby tape divers and pull ups with the best technology that will keep your baby dry, healthy, and happy for up to 12 hours. 
your well-being is our number one priority because you don't deserve the you absolutely deserve the best of all questions please contact 055 visit our website at www.reflowltd.com or visit our socials at reflowltd now if you're considering going abroad to study then you need to speak into chief global your trusted study abroad partner we facilitate all international admissions and up to full scholarship and we also advise on visa applications whether we're running your you're considering a uh, special vacation or remedial classes for wasi ILETs, sats gres or gmats we have the finest american curriculum online school as well where you can start in ghana and finish in america we have special scholarships for ghanians who also want to study in spain so call us today on 0276 034034 or 0243 335764 or email us at info at chief global.org in takrade you can reach out to us at 0277 777-996 or 0277-1777-55 that's 0277-1777-55 we're going to go on some more music then we'll come back and wrap up the show nicely right here on 3 Lounge <laughs> 